I'm Susan Greenfield. I'm a neuroscientist and also I do broadcasting and writing and speaking. And it wasn't until I was at Oxford that I got really introduced to, if you like, cutting edge science in the shape of psychology. And I got more and more interested in the nuts and bolts of the brain rather than just the behavior. And the absolute Paul of Tarsus experience for me was when I did a human brain dissection and um, wondered if I got a bit under my fingernail, if I hadn't been wearing gloves, would that be the bit that somebody loved with or would that be a habit or would it be a memory? And in a sense, I suddenly saw that the philosophical questions I'd been asking, the big questions I'd been asking that I thought were addressed by art subjects actually could be served very well by science. I have three main areas of research. One is on Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease and why the cells that are lost in those diseases are special and how we can therefore target them with drugs. The second area of research that I work on is the other end of the age spectrum. It's the young brain. And because the young brain is so impressionable to the environment, how that is affected by this new unprecedented environment of the cyber world. And the third area I work on is the biggest question of all, which is how the brain generates that subjective inner state, that first-hand condition that no one else can share that we call consciousness. Beyond my actual bench work, I'm very interested and think it's very important that one outreaches to sectors that are not scientific because now science is at the centre of all our lives. In particular, I think it's very important to think about women in science um, because all along the line, from being a schoolgirl through to being a young mum, through to being, let's say, a lecturer, through to being a professor, there are issues that are specific to women in science. Um, the second area, I think, is to look at the ethics and discuss the policy implications of things like stem cells, just so that people are on the front foot rather than the back foot when these technologies rear up and are suddenly um, coming into our orbit and important for how we're going to live our lives. And I'm very privileged to have a seat in the House of Lords where I firsthand can interact with policymakers and politicians and indeed speak in debates. And through my experiences with the all-party group and as a thinker in residence in Australia and with the Alexandrian Library in Egypt, um, it gave me an exposure to worlds and to cultures and to ideas and to agendas that are not traditionally those of the bench scientist. And building on that, I now find it very exciting and stimulating to work and talk with the private sector as well. So to come into contact with financial services, with people in education, um, with insurance, um, with advertising, with the creative industries, um, is for me opening up whole new worlds where you can actually explore ideas and interests that are common to both of you, but where you're ex looking at them in a completely different way. And so I think it's a great privilege not just to be in a lab, but actually to apply the science and the implications of your science to everyday life. There's lots of things I'm looking forward to, but we're just carrying on with the kind of activities that I'm already doing, my research and my outreach activities. But I've written several books already, and there's actually three now, possibly, in the pipeline. One on identity, which is going to come out in a few months' time, looking from a neurobiology stance. Another is a novel, which is actually going ahead 100 years, uh, called 2121, about how life might be, let's say, in 100 years' time. Um, and the third is actually really writing a book about mind change, as I call it, um, as the new climate change, as an issue that's really facing us all, and like climate change, is unprecedented, like climate change can unpack into many different issues and questions, and like climate change invites controversy, where some people think we're doomed, but other people think that uh, it's exaggerated, and other people think science can help. I'm of the latter persuasion. I think many people of my generation feel somehow that things are moving on and they're being left behind. And I think that that's wrong. It doesn't have to be like that. That really, if you keep an open mind, um, for the first time ever, we have the freedom and the time and indeed the technology to really push ourselves to realise our true potential and our unique potential. And so for me, as for anyone of my generation, I think it could be the case that the adventure is just beginning.